welcome to Small Golds. In case you missed it, top gold and silver stories for the week ended November 5th, 2016. Political certainty cannot be printed. U.S. presidential race outcome to create political, economic, and market turmoil. Federal Reserve policy rate interest rates cannot eliminate the impact of political uncertainty and news this week of media organizations struggling with profitability. Now, top story of the week, the presidential race continues to dominate the news cycle. WikiLeaks adds spirit cooking to the general lexicon and hints of federal pending criminal indictment over Hillary Clinton's handling of classified information, pay for play at the Clinton Foundation and rumors of sordid sexual occult activities cast shadow over Clinton campaign while Trump has an assassination scare in Reno. A Clinton victory would mean continued investigations and possible criminal indictment and all types of constitutional issues if she were to be elected and the scandals don't go away. So there you're going to have a political uncertainty that I think would definitely be good for the precious metals because there's one thing that's certain, it's gold. Gold is not dependent upon any political action. It's not dependent on policy. It doesn't commit fraud. It doesn't require, it doesn't default. It just is. And that's the attraction of gold and to a lesser extent, silver. Now, a Trump victory is equally likely to create turmoil. No one knows how he's going to act, if he's going to do what he says he's going to do, what his foreign policy will be, what the reaction of foreign countries will be, what his policies on trade will be, what his government spending. So you've got tremendous uncertainty no matter who wins. And on top of that, it's going to be difficult for either candidate to unify the country because both candidates have large numbers of supporters who are intractable about the other candidate. <clears throat> so for example, there are people who are never Trump and there are a large number, millions, and there are millions of people who are never Hillary. Both those camps see each candidate as unfit. Not they don't like their policies, not, you know, they, they just think that they're not fit. So the the Trump detractors think he's a demagogue, he's a racist. The New York Times calls him an existential threat. The Clinton detractors think she's a criminal and unfit and Hillary for prison, Bill Clinton is a rapist. These are not mainstream views, but views of the detractors of each candidate who number in the millions. And when you have this type of environment, neither candidate at least initially, can in any way create a stable political environment. Because if a large number of people think their president is either a criminal or an existential threat, it's very difficult for that president to gain any sort of consensus. And again, this all ties back to gold and silver. We've seen over the last week the dollar index drop from nearly 100 down to 97. And when you have this, it's not just the candidates, it's the entire system that's at risk. Because if you look at what happened to the Republicans and the Democrats, the Democrats actually nominated a candidate under, fe under federal criminal indictment. Now, they could, have been, <laughs> they could have nominated somebody else, but they didn't, which shows a flaw in the system that Hillary Clinton was going to be the nominee, even if she was arrested. It's just the way it was going to happen. And on the other side, the Republicans were unable to nominate a traditionally politically experienced candidate, which shows either ineptitude or ineffectiveness or both, which means that neither party has any grasp on the electorate or any grasp really of reality. And that's very bad, again, for political certainty. If neither party can step up and present a compelling view a, or some reason to be a Democrat or Republican other than the other candidate is an existential threat or the other candidate is a criminal, then you have a serious issue with the two-party system. And again, that has to be good for gold and silver. And just to give you a recent example of political uncertainty causing 
gold and silver to rise, you only have to go back to June when the Brexit vote took place. Now, the Brexit vote, gold and silver rose dramatically after the people in the UK voted to leave the European Union, even though that process wasn't to begin for at least a year. And as we're seeing, it may not happen at all because a recent court case said that um, Parliament would have to vote on it, and Parliament may vote not to leave the European Union. But the idea that there was political uncertainty, that the UK at some point, because they voted on it, would leave the European Union, created a situation of political uncertainty globally, not just in Britain, and gold and silver rose. The difference in this election is someone is going to get elected president as long as they have the election and they don't nullify the results or whatever. But no matter who wins, there's political uncertainty. And it's immediate. Unlike, it's not like... Uh, if Clinton wins or Trump wins, we have to wait a year or two to see whether they're going to become president. It's going to happen in January, and there'll be a period of time between the inauguration of the next president and November 8th uh, that'll be very tumultuous. The top economic story of the week ties right into this. Stock markets fell nine days in a row. That's the longest losing streak since 2008. And again, it has to do with political uncertainty. Nothing has changed in the economy to any great extent, but we're seeing this, and most of it is fear of Trump. But uh, <laughs> if Clinton wins, you, uh, you're going to have the same political uncertainty, perhaps even more, if you have these criminal indictments. The thing with Trump is if he wins, there'll be political uncertainty, but eventually things will settle down because whatever his policies are, they will become what they are, and the consequences of those policies will eventually become known. The problem with a criminal investigation is you don't know what's going to happen and you don't know how long it's going to take. So there's actually a chance that political uncertainty will last longer under a Clinton presidency. Now, gold and silver closed last week, or this week, at 1304 was gold. It was up 2.4% from 1274. And silver closed up 3.8% to $18.41. <laughs> excuse me, up from 1773 an ounce. Now, if you look at the gold-silver ratio, we're seeing a little movement back towards the 70 level, but yet gold remains elevated in the gold-silver ratio. Here's a chart of the week. Uh, you can see here, it's a little hard to see, but gold is finally, for the year now, out past the Dow Jones, and that's on the strength of a rising gold price the last two weeks, almost three weeks, and the precipitous fall, or not so much precipitous, but it's continuing falling of the Dow Jones the last two weeks. Well, you see here, if you look at the annual gold chart from back from January, we've had a very nice run from about 1050 all the way up to 1300. This is the Brexit period here. You can see it shot straight up from about 1250 to over 1300. I would expect a after the election, maybe it'll just, it'll just happen. I don't know. But I expect a similar jump here. If there's any type of uncertainty created by an election victory by either candidate because I think if Trump wins, and right now the consensus is he won't, according to the mainstream media, which the markets react to, not th that is the reality. So if, if Trump is expected to lose and he wins, I think you'll see a similar type of jump that you saw after breakfast, Brexit, not breakfast, but even higher. And if Clinton wins, apparently there are some more revelations about her. There may be a delayed effect to her winning if more WikiLeaks come out or more information or the FBI or the DOJ or whoever decides to either expose or bring out more criminal activity or actually do an indictment. That also, the day that that is announced, you will see a tremendous spike, I believe in gold or silver. I think that political uncertainty is more certain to create movements in the price of gold than economic issues. For example, during the financial crisis of 2008, gold and silver fell 
Now, people thought that was unexpected. You would think, why would people rush into dollars? Why would they sell gold and silver? Well, they did in order to meet margin requirements, and they weren't necessarily set necessarily selling gold and silver. Maybe they were selling GLD, SLV. But it's uncertain as to what can happen in a financial crisis as much as I think in a political crisis. Because in a financial crisis, and we're going back to the topic of the headline of this blog post, in a financial crisis, central banks, governments can intervene, they can print money, they can lower rates, they can provide liquidity, they can buy shares, they can do so, they can short gold, they, they can make it sell short gold, they can do things to manipulate and help to fix the markets. But you can't fix political uncertainty by printing money, lowering rates, talking about raising rates, all the stuff they do today, that would have no impact on whether people wanted gold or not. And so I think the key takeaway in all this is not who's going to win and who likes Clinton and who likes Trump. That doesn't matter. What matters is there's no way out of political uncertainty other than time or some type of you know, uh, takeover or, or coup. And that's really the danger. If political uncertainty cannot be fixed unless it runs its course, or you get some type of, what's the word? Uh, unilateral action, where they just declare this is how it's going to be. And of course, at that point, then you don't have free markets. You have the, the full... Uh, dictate, which could be like when, in 1933 with Roosevelt, they just closed the banks, they closed the markets, um, they confiscate gold. I'm not saying that that's what's going to happen. I, I'm not. I'm just saying in times of uncertainty, you sometimes get a political actor who creates political certainty. But that's not a good thing because then you, that's tyrannical. So what I'm suggesting is absent some type of tyrannical act, this political uncertainty is going to continue, and political uncertainty generally leads to higher gold and silver prices. All right, during the week, we reported on September Indian gold imports. You can check that out. I did not send out any um, small gold emails this week. The auto send is broken, so I'll probably just do a weekly send along with this podcast and blog post of what you might have missed during the week. Remember, you can become a Small Gold subscriber simply by going to the top of the Small Gold webpage, filling your email address. It's a good way to stay in touch and receive updates at least once a week. So Indian gold imports in September, this is not October, they were up, and I guess that's an advance of the Diwali uh, and other gift-giving festivals that India has in October. And it also reflects the fact that they really did not import much gold all year since January as a result of rising prices. But now that you've got a good monsoon season under the Indians farmers belts and they've got some cash and they've been buying gold for six to eight months, it looks like I think the October gold number import will be probably higher. And imports are important in India because that's primarily their source of gold other than recycling the 18,000 to 22,000 tons that they have. Interesting story, Venezuelans now carrying, weighing cash rather than counting it due to hyperinflation. Lots of stories you can click on here about Indian gold demand. U.S. economic data, again, nothing good. Personal income up, which is nice, but spending was up higher, which means people are going to debt to create that additional spending because they're not getting it necessarily from income gains. U.S. Mint is starting to, um, or is not starting to, is building off of the sales gains of October, which we'll get into in a second. These are the daily sales in November that we reported on. I'm talking about that. Here's your American Gold Eagle sales. They were at the highest of the year in October, up 287% year over year. 100,500 100, one ounce American gold eagle coins sold in October. This is something I've been talking about since the end of August, that as we enter this October season, and we have the political uncertainty, financial uncertainty, I expected to see people moving more into gold in order to protect their wealth. And it looks like, at least on the retail level, that's certainly happening. It was the highest monthly gold total of the year, gold sales of American Eagles. 
As I've been mentioning all year, Chinese Indian gold consumption has been down. There's a story in Reuters about Chinese gold consumption fell 19% in the first nine months of 2016. More stories on gold on the recovery triggered by festival season that relates to India. Another headline that we have at the top of the blog post about media outlets struggling. Reuters announced that they're going to lay off, it says 20,000, but it's 2,000 uh, of its employees. And if you remember, Reuters is basically a mouthpiece for the current administration. They've been describing the economy as solid, robust, strengthening. They used the word recovery for five years. And basically, it's, it's not true because if it was true and it was solid and robust, and you know, if they, that mirrors the Federal Reserve language, they use the same uh, ridiculous words because if that was all true and the economy really was solid, robust, and strengthening, they would have raised rates a long time ago. The New York Times also reported a massive decline in profits. They made just $400,000 in that income, and I'm sure there's some bloggers that might be able to make $400,000. Um, the New York Times has become just like and they admit it, the Washington Post, they are less interested in journalism, but more interested in pushing across a political point of view, like CNN, which they call the Cheating News Network, the Clinton News Network, more, more interested in creating a political outcome rather than journalism. And that's why you're seeing the rise of independent journalism, which is uncovering a lot of these scoops. And then, of course, what the mainstream media does is they, quote, discredit these independent journalists without saying why they just label them with a broad brush as being discredited so i think we're seeing now and even great now remember after the election what's going to happen a lot of these mainstream media uh, news outlets are getting decent amounts of views traffic uh, because of the election and also a lot of people go to look uh, to criticize what they're saying but they're not going to have that readership after the election because there's there's really not that much the interest goes away and then what stories are they going to create to create the the readership so i think we're seeing kind of the fall of the mainstream media and i think eventually you're going to see colleges go the same way and it all ties into information is readily available it's cheap you don't have to it used to be you don't argue with anybody who buys ink by the gallon but right now, the print media is dead. That's not the easiest and best way to disseminate information. Uh, textbooks, you don't need those anymore. Online information is available. And it's available from a variety of sources. And it's more market-driven because it's not just you have to get your information from three networks or six, seven, eight newspapers. So it's the same with college. There really is no monopoly on disseminating information or teaching information and other than the concept of credentialed academics. But clearly people can learn from people who, other people who know stuff. It doesn't have to be that that person has gone through some rigorous college program in order to uh, impart basic knowledge. Now, I'm not criticizing academia as being uh, irrelevant. What I'm saying, though, is you don't need to have this massive amount of additional education just to present knowledge and analysis. And you can get that knowledge and analysis without having to pay 20, 30, 50, 60 thousand dollars a year. So I think colleges over the next five years, especially with the price, are going to go the way of the newspapers. U.S. economic data, manufacturing PMI. Actually, this was one little bright spot. It went up a bit. It's been going down all year. It's missed expectations all year. This week, it, it, it went up, or this that was the October number went up. Uh, U.S. Mint sales, we cover those every day. If you go to Twitter, I, I generally try to throw up the U.S. Mint sales numbers for the day if they report them sometime around 5, 6, 7 o'clock, and then I reproduce them here. Again, if you're interested in buying any precious metals, American silver eagles, American gold eagles, platinum, whatever it is, please go to smallgold.com and uh, purchase your silver or gold through the site. Uh, we have a number of affiliates. I think it's about six or seven different choices. You can compare their precious metal dealers' prices, shipping, and make your 
decision. And if you do buy your gold or silver through small gold, we receive a small commission, full disclosure. It's not very much, but it does help the site out. It's not a recommendation that you buy gold or silver, but if you are interested in buying it, please help out small gold. Do it through this site. See all these ads there. You can click on those and make your purchases. Uh, American Silver Eagle sales also are up in October. Look at that. That's the second best October month total in 30 years. The biggest total was uh, two years ago in 2014 when they sold 5.8 million. But last month they sold 3.825. But that reflects, if you click on this link here, you can see I've got more charts on American Silver Eagle sales. American Silver Eagle sales have been atrocious from, or at least in recent terms since 2009. I've only been in the one to two million dollar, one, one to two million unit range from July, August, and September. So the impact is the rebound in October. We'll see if that continues. It doesn't look it's like it's going to continue as much in November, whereas the gold sales continue to accelerate. Economic data. Uh, the, the job market is not very good. And the ADP came out. It showed 147,000 jobs in October. They expected 165,000. It was down. We'll see in a couple of seconds when we get down to the non-farm payroll. That wasn't very good either. More U.S. mint sales updates. More ads for you to click on and purchase your gold or silver. Now, American Gold Buffaloes also, along with the American Gold Eagle sales, were up nicely in October. They were up 171 uh, percent year over year in October to 28,500. Remember these are the 24 karat gold coins. I don't have a picture of them here uh, but if you go to this link you can check out the American Gold Buffaloes. Unfortunately they're only available in the one ounce size so they're quite pricey but uh, they are 24 karat. They sell for about the same price as American Gold Eagles but they are 24 karat as opposed to 22 karat just keep in mind that doesn't mean that the American Gold Eagle doesn't have an ounce of gold. It does. It means that the coin, the American Gold Eagle, is slightly larger than the American Gold Buffalo because it also has some silver and some copper in it. So the American Gold Eagle is about 91.67% gold and the American Gold Buffalo is 99.99% gold. So they have a slightly different color too because the American Gold Eagle has some copper and silver in it. Some interesting news, <coughs> excuse me, on the gold uh, miners, Rand Gold profits surged as they got their production back on track. King Gross, another gold mining company, beat expectations. I'll try to get out this week the silver mining production, which appears also to be up this year and through the third quarter. I've got a blog post prepared but not finished on the primary silver miners and also the Francillo, which is the largest silver mining production company in the world. Their production was also up for silver. More information on uh, Indian gold demand, if you click on these links here. China. We've been talking about Russia selling gold to China. We've been talking about uh, Chinese investment in Siberian gold mining companies, uh, gold mining properties, and this week there was another story about a Chinese company to buy a stake in Russia's largest gold miner. So just keep that in mind. Russia seems to uh, be coming, I think they're the second largest, depends on who you talk to or what information you read, the second or third largest, it's either Australia or Russia behind China is the world's largest golding producers. And looks like Russia is capitalizing on its gold reserves and its gold mining industry by adding the largest amount of gold of any central bank to its reserves. But it seems it has some additional gold that it also wants to capitalize on by selling either the bullion or the mining rights. All right. Now, initial claims, they were higher than expected, but they've been under 300,000 for a long period of time. I don't read much into initial claims. I think the job market... You've got people that have been out of the job market so long they can no longer qualify for initial claims, so they don't uh, they don't show up in initial claims anymore. Also, rather than getting and once you get rid of your once your unemployment insurance is finished, you can get there are plenty of part time jobs, and many people if they lose their part time job they just go and get another one. Basically, even if you have a decline in employment. 
because so many companies have moved to creating these part-time labor forces, let's say they used to need 100 workers to get the job down. Now they need 180 workers, maybe even, maybe even double that, maybe even 220, depending on how they manage their part-time workers. So even though the economy is not doing as well as it once was, the job market is in a sense robust in that you can go and get yourself a part-time job. Well, if you could do that, then there's no reason to collect unemployment. Factory orders, that wasn't bad. ISM non-manufacturing fell. Again, these numbers every month for the last couple of years, we see them. They're nothing special. I don't know where the Federal Reserve comes off saying they're solid, robust, or Reuters strengthening. They're not. A lot of ads this week. Okay. Um, now, Friday, non-farm payroll. 161,000 jobs versus an expectation of 173. Even 173 is nothing to shake a stick. It's not that big of a deal. But the spin was incredible. Yahoo Finance. Headline. Was on, it was up for like three hours on the front of Yahoo Finance. The October jobs report was perfect for Hillary Clinton. How? I, I don't know. Well, they were trying to say that um, wages had gone up the most in a few years. But that's a one-month total. They haven't been going up all year. So you can't say a one-month total is perfect for Hillary Clinton. You can't say 161,000 jobs is perfect for Hillary Clinton unless you're just shilling for Hillary Clinton. CNBC, the headline, jobs report could help Hillary Clinton win election. Again, how? It, the, the jobs report wasn't good at all. It, it's boggling. It, it's Orwellian to say that these, at best, okay numbers somehow bode well or are perfect for a particular candidate. And, and, and likewise, you couldn't say, these job numbers are wonderful for, for Donald Trump because they show how bad the economy is. Well, they kind of do, but they're not that bad. But they're also not that good. But to go and try to say that this is perfect for Hillary, it's going to help her win the election, it's more than a stretch. It's just obvious partisanship. And you got more Fed chatter. I, I hate covering it, but you have to cover it. All year, these guys just talk, 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 talk. And it's Fed chatter. We're going to raise rates. It's rate hikes are on the table. It's what I call the Fed yak attacks, just to keep themselves relevant that somehow they're going to raise rates. This guy, Lockhart's now saying rate hikes to be very gradual. Hikes, rate increases. S, plural. What rate increases? They said two years ago they would do gradual rate hikes. They've done one in two years. That's not a gradual rate hikes. That's a rate hike last year, and they might do one in December this year. That's one rate hike a year. That's not gradual rate hikes. That's every year maybe doing a rate hike. U.S. Mint sales updates, I think now, yeah, you can see the American Silver Eagles are not selling that much this year so far the, this month. They've only sold 220,000. It's not bad, but at this pace, that's not even a million a month, but the American Gold Eagles are still selling at a robust, solid pace. And they are, I think they've sold about 10,500 so far this month. Uh, we covered Indian silver imports. You want to check that out. And that's about it for this week. Thank you very much for listening. And please subscribe to Small Gold. Follow us on Twitter and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you very much.